So one of my favorite of your collaborations is when you synced up with live performers in Japan and one in outer space while you were in Texas to perform a particularly meaningful piece pertaining to the cosmos. Tell me about this collaboration and what impact this had on you as an artist. So this was a nine-year-old dream come true, uh, which is really harks back to how Bella Gaia started was actually I was I was approached by randomly by a random phone call in Japan while I was living in Japan um, by this dot com millionaire guy who said oh, I'm a really big <coughs> excuse me he said uh, yeah he called me out of the blue and he said I'm a really big fan of yours and by the way I'm I'm paying twenty million dollars to go to space on the Russian Soyuz as a space tourist. So we had lunch, and so he said, yeah, so while I'm in space, I want to collaborate with you somehow. Um, so to get things started, let me sponsor you on a trip to Kazakhstan to see my friend Greg Olson, who's going to fly on the Soyuz with two other Russian cosmonauts. Uh, and so we went on this crazy journey. Yeah, it was not your average <laughs> lunch meeting. And um, so it was basically on that trip where I met that NASA astronaut and I, I heard his story of of his life-changing experience of the overview effect and so anyway but that that first idea of collaborating with somebody in space was planted in my head mm -hmm. and yeah nine years later was it maybe ten years later it actually happened through an introduction to um, uh, Koichi Wakada who's the Japanese astronaut um, and he was a fan of Bella Gaia as well. He actually provides a quote for us in the show. And so we trained him to play this, this ancient uh, traditional instrument called a sho, S-H-O. Mm -hmm. And uh, we trained him before he went to space to play just one note. We just, he wasn't a musician, so we wanted to make it very easy. So it's like a harmonica, so just basically blowing into this harmonica. Um, easy uh, and so it was more the logistics of getting that thing up there um, and so but it all it all happened so he went up to space the instrument was transported separately on a SpaceX module wow. uh, and it, when it arrived he he unpacked it and um, and started practicing and so timed it for this rendezvous as he was orbiting above Houston in that line of sight um, orbit uh, from horizon to horizon he and I connected while I was at mission control in Houston with a live video and audio feed and we didn't even really rehearse um, although we, uh, we told we, we we trained in which note to play that would be in tune with my violin uh -huh. so um, that was all designed and pre-planned and yeah so we did this this four minute moment of collaboration with me playing the violin over his bass tone mm -hmm. on the show and and it was so meaningful not only because it was like this dream come true for me but the instrument is actually a uh, traditional instrument used for tuning the cosmos and so the fact that it was the first instrument of that kind ever in history to go to space and with that sort of historical meaning that he's actually literally tuning the cosmos in space <laughs> um, was profoundly uh, impactful and yeah it was an incredible experience and it later it was returned back to Earth, and we returned it actually back to the donor, which was Tenry University in Japan, and uh, got a lot of news coverage um, when that was returned too. But um, yeah, it was it was really amazing. That's very very special. What kind of feedback did you get from audiences that happened to see it live, or were were around you when you were performing, or um, you know as you were getting feedback in the later months? Yeah, uh, people were just they can't sort of believe, you know, that we pulled this thing off. Um, just chills, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I made it a prayer for, for peace yeah. for the planet. Um, 
and so yeah you can just draw it up on YouTube maybe put a link to it mm -hmm. uh, that would be great